Ahoy, this is Zdenka. This video will help you master all new camera features on iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Let's go through the buttons, explain the cameras, photo and video format and resolution, log video profile, all accessories you can get, how to attach them to a gimbal, and much more. Let's start with photo mode, as now you're able to take photos in 24 or 48 megapixels without touching the RAW. Many of you might be confused about all the formats and sizes, so let's jump into camera settings to explain it all. Let's hit settings and find a camera. Let's select formats. Right at the top, you can choose if you want to select high efficiency HEIF or most compatible JPEG format. What is the difference? High efficiency is a newer compression format, which will give you a wider range of colors and smoother gradients, which means more natural and true to life photos. So it is better than JPEG. However, if you are worried that you might not able to open the files on different devices, go with the most compatible one, which is JPEG. If you will be taking photos with your main camera, one time default setting, you can choose to save those photos either in 12 or 24 megapixels. All the other modes, such as night mode, macro, flash and portrait will be saved in 12 megapixels. What is the difference between 12 megapixels and 24 megapixels? Size is an easy answer, but it's not only that. 12 megapixel photos are better in low light situations and they are easy to share as they are small. 24 megapixel photos are good in low light. They are most balanced images and are much bigger so you can crop them further. The details are quite good if you zoom in, unlike with 12 megapixels. I keep it at 24 megapixels. For those who want exceptional quality, you can enable Pro Raw and resolution control. Let's go to Pro Default Settings. If you select HEIF, you will see HEIF Max, which is going to allow you to take photos up to 48 megapixel size. If you select it earlier on most compatible, you will see JPEG instead. I selected high efficiency. That is why I am seeing HEIF Max. There is also an option to shoot in Pro Raw 12 megapixel or Pro Raw Max, which is also up to 48 megapixels. What is the difference between HEIF Max and Pro Raw Max? Which one is better for you? Very simply put, HEIF Max is great for saving space for people who don't need RAW. They don't want the extra editing, but they want the extra resolution for cropping up to 48 megapixels. Pro Raw Max photos are for those who want to do extra editing, tweaking colors, change white balance and such. This one will give you the most quality. If you select HEIF Max, it is going to be shown in the app right here. If your choice is to go with Pro Raw Max, you will see it here instead. Now, if you want to take photos in Raw Max, you cannot do live mode at the same time. Either or live mode, or Pro Raw Max. This is all with rear cameras. If you will use a portrait camera, you will only get the option to shoot in Raw 12. I'm going to mention now that if you are interested in going through entire camera app, I have in-depth tutorial on that on the 14 Pro line as the camera app has not changed. It's exactly the same. In this video, I'm only showing the new edit features. I'll link it below for those interested. Moving on to another new feature, which is converting regular photos to portrait photos. This only works with faces, cats and dogs in regular photo mode. It's not going to work if you have live feature enabled or Apple Pro Raw or HEIF Max. Now, when I choose any regular photo, I can see at the top left corner an option to change it into a portrait photo. And now you can see a very nice blurry background. Under edit, you can adjust the strength of the effect. You can select the lighting effect by tapping this first icon on the left. And you can also choose a focal point by tapping on the screen. So if there are two people, you can select the one you want in the focus. Let's go to cameras as there is a new feature when it comes to default lenses. 
you can see ultra wide angle lens, main one time camera, two times telephoto, and three times telephoto. Let's tap on the main one time camera and keep tapping. You will see that the camera is changing between three different focal lengths 24, 28, and 35 millimeters. This is 24 millimeters, this is 28 millimeters, and 35 millimeters. Every time you are going to open up the camera app and tap on the one time main camera, your preferred focal length, it will automatically be selected. How do you set your preferred focal length? Let's go back to camera settings. Scroll down until you see the main camera. Hit that. Here at the top is where you can see those additional lenses being enabled by default. Below is default lens section where you can select your preferred lens. 24 mm one time, 28 mm 1.2 times, or 35 mm 1.5 times. I personally keep it at 24 mm. Let's move away from photography to video. First of all, there are two very important features you need to enable if you don't have them enabled already. The first one is level. Many times we think that we have quite straight horizon or lines looking at the screen. But once we actually upload the videos on a computer and look at the bigger screen, then we see that it's not the case. Let's go to settings and scroll down to composition section. Here, as you can see, I have enabled grid and level. I highly suggest having both enabled. Grid will help you with composition, horizontal and vertical lines. If you place an object where those lines meet, you will have a more interesting view rather than keeping your object always in the middle. The second very important feature is locking up the white balance. Let me show you a clip where the white balance is unlocked. As you can see, the colors change as I am moving around. Let me show you another clip where white balance was locked. Now you can see the visual result is much better. So let's go to settings, go to record video, scroll all the way down until you see lock white balance and turn it on. It's time to cover the big one, Apple ProRes lock profile. If you're someone who is interested in filming high quality videos with better dynamic range, better for color grading and getting not so over sharpened image you typically get with smartphones, let's go to settings, formats, scroll all the way down, enable Apple ProRes and hit ProRes encoding below. Here you will get three choices, HDR, very colorful video, SDR, regular video, and lock. Let's select that. Now, when you open a camera app, you will see an option to film in ProRes lock profile. I'm going to go back to settings, camera, and make sure it's also enabled under preserve settings. So now when I'm filming in lock, someone calls me, I'll take a break, answer the phone call, come back to camera app and open it up. I'm already back in log profile and I can just continue. What you need to keep in mind is that you can record log footage directly to your smartphone if you will be filming in 4K in 24 or 30 frames per second. And if you need to film in 60 frames per second, it has to be in 1080p. If you want to film in 4K 60 frames per second, you will need to use an external SSD card. I will get to that shortly. The files will be very large. Once you enable the log profile, you will see your maximum recording time in the resolution and frame rate you selected. The video will be washed out and to make it look good, you will need to apply a LUT in the post. Then you can color grade your video further or apply another LUT. I have my own LUTs, which I created specifically for this smartphone. I'll link it below for those interested as well. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to film in 60 frames per second in log profile, you will have to use SSD card. I have SSD PNY Pro LED V2 and this 90 degrees 3.1 USB cord. This part is very long, so it can easily plug in. Then you have to just attach the SSD card to your case with the help of these magnetic rings or simply Velcro. 
If you will be using gimbal, the same. You can attach it here with the Velcro or find appropriate clamp for SSDs such as this one. Moving on. I've got some bonus tips for you to speed up your workflow, as some of you might not be familiar with all the button functions when it comes to cameras. So let's run through them. When you are in camera app, your volume buttons are used to take photos. If you tap the volume button, it will take a photo. Let's go quickly to settings and to make sure your use volume up for burst is enabled. Now, when you are in the camera app, if you long press the up button, it will take burst photos. And if you long press the down volume button, it will record video. Let's recap the quick take feature. If you are in a photo mode and press the shutter, you will take photos. If you press and hold, you will record a video. If you press, hold and drag right, you will lock the video and it will keep recording. If you press and drag left, you will take burst photos. This is good to remember. Sometimes you run into a situation where you quickly want to grab a video or burst photos and you don't have a time to navigate through all the modes. New action button has been added. This one can be fully customized and also used to open a camera app. Simply go to settings, scroll to the action button. As you can see, there are many different options you can select. Let's go to the camera and at the bottom, if you click, you can even select your preferred mode. So now when you press the action button, it will take you to a specific camera mode. I hope you found this video helpful for those who are complete beginners and want to learn all about smartphone filmmaking. I have a course on that below. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, say hello in the comments and uh, perhaps check out one of these next. See you in the next one. Ciao. Ahoy.